Now, you might be wondering why I'm stood here holding a spatula at the start of this week's NXT. Well, if you've already seen the show, you'll know there are a lot of different weapons introduced this week that we use to attack people and hit people and hurt people. And I'll be honest, I was scarred. So from now on, I'm going to be holding this for all of my videos because nobody's getting the jump on Mr. Gareth Morgan. <laughs> Okay, so stupid spatulas aside, it was a must-see episode of NXT this week and there's just so much that I need to tell you and so much I need to talk about. So I'm not going to carry on jabbering about spatulas and hitting myself in the face. We're going to talk about all the ups and downs for this week's NXT. My favourite thing in the whole world happened at the start of this show yet again because we didn't have somebody just stood there in the middle of the ring going, I want a title shot, I'm the best. We didn't have that, that happened kind of later on in the night, but to start things off we had a match. And oh, what a match, it's gonna get an up. It is Leon Ruff versus Isaiah Swerve Scott in a Falls Count Anywhere spectacular. And I've said it time and time again, but these two just have magnificent chemistry. And literally, as the match just started, the bell kicked off, Leon Ruff sprinted at Isaiah Swerve of Scott and he like sucked him in, he had his back to him, he's like I disrespect you, I do not like you. He just turned around and kneed him in the face. And what I loved about this match is just it rewarded you for keeping up with this feud and watching week after week because every time one of the dudes went for something, one of their signature moves like Leon Ruff's evasive manoeuvres and his crucifix bomb thing, Isaiah Swerve Scott, he knew the score so he counted it and then Leon Ruff counted Isaiah Swerve Scott stuff, he kept trying to do the cutter, he couldn't do the cutter, it was just like yes these two, they've had a lot of fights, they know what's going to happen. And this match just had pretty much everything, like Isaiah Swerve Scott caught Leon Ruff in like a fireman's carry, just launched him back first into the apron, he's done that before but it still looks horrific. And then there was the mother of all superplexes, seriously it was the biggest superplex you ever did see. And then just as Isaiah Swerve Scott launched a big red toolbox at Leon Ruff's face, it happened. I want it. Woo! Because the nature boy popped up on my screen and you know what? He was selling something to do with some weird car insurance or car repair and stuff but because he is the nature boy and he whacked a guy in the face with a steel chair I don't even have a car but you know what? Woo! I want it! I want it! Oh yeah, when all that was happening, the action went backstage and they started beating each other up in like corridors and things like that. But that was not as important as Ric Flair just hitting people in the face with chairs. But all this chaos, this action, this seriously vicious action for the most part was all leading to a very vital moment. Because just when Leon Ruff got on top of like a CWC platform, he was going for like a crossbody, he got caught in midair by AJ Francis. Now obviously we don't know who AJ Francis is, he's a former NFL football player, he's apparently aligned with Isaiah Swerve Scott, who then took Leon Ruff into the middle of the ring and hit him with a JML driver for the win. So he gets the big, like, shocking victory, great stuff. But then his new apparent faction, they all joined together, walked off out of the ramp, and everyone was left there thinking, huh, this is different. And then later on in the night, it was explained that Brianna Brandy and Ashanti Adonis had joined with AJ Francis and Isaiah Swerve Scott to join, like, this new... Entourage, I think we're calling it, an entourage thing. That I sounded very posh there. Entourage is what they are. They're a collection of people who are probably just going to beat the crap out of anybody who gets in their way. They need this. I like this because it gives Swerve Scott a platform to potentially be catapulted into something excellent near the top of the card. And you know what? I like this character. I hope it gets there. Then it was time to step into the most important room in all of NXT, Mr. William Regal's office. So without further ado, step into my office. Now obviously Gargano and Theory were stolen around backstage before they actually got into Regal's office itself with the door wide open which was a little bit strange but Scarlett was in there, they were having a meeting, Gargano was like oh you need to make time for me not Scarlett, Scarlett was just looking at him like what the hell dude and Regal was like get out this is a meeting you buffoons. And because of that, it's going to get, we're going to bring it up, a 42% on the Theorometer. It's going to stick. 
The most charismatic man in all of NXT was up next. He was in a match against Asher Hale and the bout itself and all the stuff that kind of comes after it. We're going to throw it all into one again because it's like a show-wide story. It's all getting up, obviously. Because Cameron Grimes was able to overcome Asher Hale. He hits him with like a cave-in out of nowhere. After Asher Hale looked pretty good, he hit him like a, a crossed-legged dragon screw thing at one point where I was like, man, that guy's got some unique offense. But then after he'd obviously won this match, Cameron Grimes went backstage and the disrespect that continues to be shown to ever rise, it's not on, I'm not happy with it because he was like, oh, I'm going to go to a VIP experience, party of three, they were like, oh, us two. He's like, nope, me, myself, and I, you're a dick. But then Karma bit this boy right on the bottom because as soon as he turned up to the venue where he had his VIP room, he found out that his name was not on the list. That was because the million dollar man, you knew it was coming, he'd actually rented the entire venue. And then he was like, oh, Grimes, you know, if you're going to do this going forward, don't just rent a room, rent the entire place. Ha ha ha, loads of laughing. Cameron Grimes was like, damn you, DiBiase. And this is good. More of this. Just keep him on screen with Ted DiBiase. He's a recognizable legend. It makes Cameron Grimes feel special and important. I just hope they come together, make a, a business arrangement, and everybody gets the money. Kid and Kara and Casey Catanzaro just popped back up for the first time in like a couple of weeks, and they were like, oh, this Tian Sha Mei Ying stuff, we, we don't want to talk about it now, it was really freaky. We're going to focus on the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships instead. So I was like, okay, is that is that just done? I mean, great if it is, because I was getting a bit like weirded out and not really into it, but we just dropping it like that. Okay. The grizzled young veterans, Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa, were all involved in the big tag team absolute schlobber knocker after this. And obviously the match itself, because look at the teams that are involved, it's obviously going to get an up. But then before things could even get underway, you had a feeling where the actual action was going to go. Because Zach Gibson and James Drake were like, right, don't you dare, all you horrible people in the CWC, don't you dare take your shoes off and start saying that you hate Zach Gibson. Don't do it, because if you do, we're going to be angry. And then the match unfolded and as you guess it was physical it was violent it was everything i really like in my wrestling because i'm a sick dude like there was a moment where timothy thatcher had zach gibson in like a sleeper hold or something and james drake came in just booted him in the face was like let go of my buddy and he just smiled at him tomato champa grabbed james drake and the two of them just started beating the chest like they were in some kind of drumming band but then the real story coming out of this after all the chaos like james drake just dived out of the ring and hit tomato champa who flew over the announce desk Wade Barrett, of all people, lost this shoe. And it was said in like a throwaway line, but then you just something flagged in your mind. You thought, that's a weird thing just to exclaim that you've lost your shoe. His shoe was then brought into the ring, and then Timothy Thatcher hit Zach Gibson in the face with said shoe, and then used a submission hold to win the match. And uh, yeah, Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa won. Yeah, great. But the baby faces used a shoe on the heels to win the match. That was just a bit baffling to me. Now again, this does just highlight the fact that this NXT tag team division is, well, it's ridiculously competitive. Anybody could be anybody on any given night. But I think having the heels lose by, like, cheating tactics, it's a weird kind of mixed messaging thing. I don't know if Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa are just in a grey area right now. If that is the case, cool, but... I don't know, this feels like we're stepping further away from MSK versus GYV, which gets me very concerned, but fingers crossed, that match is still coming because we deserve nice things, give it! And then there was a really funny moment backstage, because like Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory were storming around, they were like, we're going to go and break down the door of Mr. Regal's office, they were going to smash into his office, and then Theory went to do it, and he was like, ah, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to tap on it instead, which is probably what I would do, because I'm a big chicken. And then when Johnny Gargano tried to wriggle his way out of a match against Bronson Reed later down the line because obviously Austin Theory lost his match against Reed so that match is going to be happening at some point. It didn't happen so William Regal was like nope the match is still going ahead and oh Theory because you made a comment about Scarlet's nails yeah you're going to be fed to carry and cross next week. The boy gonna die. Right, and I cannot believe I'm going to do this because you guys all know right now, Karrion Cross is my boy. But this segment, this whole thing, like Karrion Cross's big reveal after three weeks of not really doing much in NXT, came down to the ring. This whole thing, it's, it's got to get it down. I'm sorry. Because yes, he came down, he did his really big epic entrance, and I was like, oh, he's going to just explode the CWC. And then he like went on about the fact he laid down this gauntlet saying, oh, three weeks ago, I said, everybody, come and challenge me. And nobody did. And it's just a bit like, well, what are you waiting for? And that's precisely what I was thinking. What are we waiting for? And obviously this opened the door for Kyle O'Reilly, Pete Dunne, Finn Balor, all of them to walk down to the ring and be like, right, well, I want your title. And I was like, okay, we're going to have a fatal four-way. We're going to have like a triple threat, which paves the way for the next challenger. Adam Cole as well is just not included in all of this for whatever reason. Like he's, he's not seen as an eligible challenger. It was all a bit meh. And then obviously it just devolved into a brawl because... 
wrestling. And look, I don't mind that because I like a bit of fighting, I like a bit of violence obviously in my wrestling, but then Karrion Cross just held the ring, everyone else, all these challenges were just thrown out, they were made to look like goose, he just went through them all like they were just a knife through butter. And then the way he came in and attacked Karrion Cross, they like double super kicked him in the face, and then Johnny Gargano whacked him in the face with the North American Championship as well, so Karrion Cross was left there laying, and you just felt like, well, I don't know what this is gonna be now going forward because I don't think the way you're gonna have like a significant feud with Karrion Cross in the near future. I don't think they're gonna muddle those belts together again. I just can't see that happening. So that feels like a bit of a, a stopgap, just a way of filling time. And if that's the case, why have we not got a clear direction for Karrion Cross? He's your big champion. You've got all these challengers, just pick one and let them have a feud. It's that easy. But we're gonna forget about that. I'm not gonna hang up on these negatives because we had a great little match after this. It was Zayda Remier taking on Saray. Obviously, these two had big standout moments on last week's NXT, so they threw them together and the match gets an up. Again, it was short, sweet, it did everything it needed to do, it made both stars look very effective and impressive in their own right, but Saray, man, I mean, the drop kicks this lady can throw out, it is, it's ridiculous. They're so precise, they're so violent, there was one she did, like, to the bottom rope as Eddie Ramirez, like, hanging on it, and I very nearly thought, yes, this woman's lost her head, they're gonna have to try and glue it back on, on live television. But after a violent German suplex and a urinage from Saray, she she won the match, so it's a great thing for her. She looked very impressive, but Zayda Ramir also. I mean, anybody who's got a shooting star press that impressive in the bat locker, they're going to be fine. We then had a little backstage bit where Imperium were FaceTiming Walter, and he did not look happy. He was just blasting him. I heard the word incompetent be used. I didn't know what he was saying. I think he was speaking Austrian. I'd, I'm not fluent in Austrian, I don't think. So, yeah, he was just going mad, and then Alexander Wolf stormed off, so... Did he give him orders? We did find out that Alexander Wolf is going to be taking on Killian Dane next week, so maybe it was a thing like, oh, you've got to batter Dane to prove that you're a part of Imperium and part of the future. Not too sure. Maybe that was the point. We then jump back to the aftermath of this Saray Zeta Ramirez match, and she went backstage. Zeta Ramirez was obviously like lay down. She's like, oh, that was quite a German suplex and Nuranagi combination you just hit me with right there. And then Tony Storm just came out of nowhere. She popped up, and I was like, no, 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 she's going to beat up the newbies. But that did not happen because Zoe Stark is the savior of the newbies. She got in the way of Tony Storm, and they like squared up, and I was like, ooh, that's going to be a thing again going forward. LA Knight was next up, and he had a match against Jake Atlas. He was looking to continue. His one week winning streak. Yeah. Now, and you'd be pleased to know he did exactly that, and the match itself was lovely, so it's getting an up. I say lovely, it didn't really have to do that much impressive. It just needed to ensure that LA Knight got a win, and Jake Atlas didn't look like a goofball in the process. And I think it did that because Jake Atlas ran at him like a man possessed. Obviously, before this, LA Knight has said he's going to kick his ass so far down the street, he's going to need an Atlas to find it, and that did make me pop. But again, the main thing to take away from this match was the finish. It was quite impressive. LA Knight went for his weird jumping super athletic top rope thing that he normally does and then Atlas dodged out the way kicked him in the gut kicked him in the face went for a spinning heel kick which LA Knight saw coming he telegraphed it dug down hit him with a BFT and the game was over again step in the right direction Atlas looked pretty good in defeat and LA Knight push him into something meaningful now, give him a North American Championship program, or just something significant to do, having win it, because for some reason, we need to salvage this man, he's only been here a couple of months. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell were backstage after this, and they're obviously getting hyped up for their street fight, which was happening tonight, that is a thing, and oh boy, what a thing, but we'll get there. And in the backstage segment, like Indy Hartwell, there was a there was a picture of her and Dexter Loomis, which had obviously been put there by Dexter Loomis, so that was pushed into a cabinet by LeRae, she was like, don't look at that. And then you saw in the door frame, Dexter Loomis stood there, he was being lit, he had flowers, it was all very strange and intense, and if somebody had just walked into a room and watched you watching this on a on a Tuesday night or Wednesday morning like myself, they'd probably think you've got some issues. Following up on all that back and forth between Tony Storm and Zoe Stark earlier in the night, of course, Tony Storm cut a promo down the lens like is the thing to do in NXT, she was like, I brought you into this business, Zoe Stark, I can take you back out of it, but as of this moment, there's still no real concrete information on when that match is going to happen, I just want it, give it to me let Tony Storm win, she needs to win. The most dominant faction in all of NXT were in the middle of the ring after this because they had a hell of a main event last week, they just set the world on fire. An emphatic victory over MSK and Kushida and you know what? I think my boy Santos wants his belt back. And that's pretty much all this was. Santos was saying, yep, I think we're really good at what we do. We battered these guys last week, I want my belt. Oh yeah, and uh, Joaquin Wilde and Ra Mendoza, they want the NXT Tag Team Championships, so give us, like Batista 
said what they want. Kushida then beamed himself into the CWC and he was like, yes, you can have your match because I want to fight you and I want to kick your ass. But it was then confirmed later on in the night it's going to be a two out of three falls match, which I think that's NXT's ways of just getting the definitive winner. It's like, no excuses. You've had three chances or two chances or whatever chances you need in this match. Whoever comes out on top, they the champ forever. Maybe not forever, but for now. One of my favorite like interview segments that I've seen in quite some time really on NXT happened after this and it was concise. It didn't really overstay its welcome, but it was Raquel Gonzalez, the NXT Women's Champion and Mercedes Martinez in one of those side-by-side -side kind of video interviews. And I think what made this interview so good was the fact it felt natural, it felt organic, it felt like something you'd see in the build to a boxing or a UFC fight or something, we've got these two fighters that cannot stand each other, they cannot be in the same room, so they're going to keep overlapping and keep bickering and just like fluidly answering back to each other and not just reading off the script like, oh this is my line where I say you're an idiot, ha <laughs> ha. And they had some really good quips in this because Mercedes Martinez was just like, oh well they've obviously just seen what I did and just done it again with you. I'm the blueprint for you, really. You're just a copy. And then Raquel Gonzalez was like, well, you set the bar that low. It's like, you did set it. It was it was the bar. But then I've taken this bar with one hand and thrown it into the moon. And Cameron Grimes is up there too. But all you need to know is it made the match feel epic. And yes, that's coming next week. I mean, we're getting spoiled, aren't we? Really quickly, we had a little segment where Shotty Blackheart and Ember Moon were backstage and Frankie Monet's dog had crapped in the tank. I love wrestling. The main event was then finally upon us. It was the street fight for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell challenging for Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon's belts. And it's not just getting an up. It's getting a yellow highlighter of the week up. And this is significant because my God did this division need this up. And like before the match even started, I got really excited because like Blackheart and Moon came out as Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. They were like cosplaying as these terrifying villainous people from horror. And it was just like, oh, it's really cool. It feels special already. And honestly, the match just had a little bit of everything. You had trash guns being smashed over people's heads. Like Indy Hartwell got put in the trash gun and double drop kicked. People were getting thrown through tables left, right and centre. It was just, it was extreme. And like we went to a commercial break and came back and the ring had just filled up with weapons. There was chairs everywhere, tables everywhere. I was like, this is, this is not going to end well. And sure enough, it didn't because Shotzi Blackheart hit Candice the Ray with a senton through a ladder and I was like, oh, it's not going to get any more extreme than this. But it did because Ember Moon Moon launched Indy Hartwell into a table and it didn't even break. It was one of them really sickening bumps where they just bounce off it and you're like, oh, that hurts more. And then there was a bit where Indy Hartwell held the ladder up and had Shotzi Blackout on the ladder and Candice LeRae did a moonsault onto it. It was just too much. But then upping the ante by like a million percent, Shotzi Blackout got... Wade Barrett's mug, okay? She got a mug and smashed it over the head of Indy Hartwell. So that knocked her out onto the announce desk. She climbed up to the scaffolding and just cross-bodied her from the scaffold. It was just, I love this match. I, it was just great. It's, I love violence. But then just to make things even crazier, in the final stages, Ember Moon ended up on a table on the outside. Indy Hartwell did like a springboard elbow drop two at that table to the outside it was just like pfft, that was carnage but then as we got back into the ring Candice the Ray had some brass knuckles okay the William Regal brass knuckles she punched Shotzi Blackheart right in the face and then wicked stepsistered her onto a steel chair I, I, I felt ill. I felt ill. But obviously that led to their victory. They are now the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. And more of this. This is what we want. This is just a super intense, brilliant showcase of four incredible women just kicking all the ass. That's what we need this division to be. More of that, less girl gets annoyed because boy is doing silly things and breaking a heart. We don't need that. We've done that. It's stupid. More hardcore chaos. And if it isn't crystal clear at this point, this entire show is getting a monumental up from me, probably mostly because of the main event, because that is what we need. More of it. I just hope we can keep the momentum going from this women's tag team division and it can just go off into a new dawn of love and happiness and just weapons. I want more weapons. I want this spatula introduced next week. So let me know what you thought of this week's NXT ups and downs. I, of course, have been Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling. Don't forget to like this video, share the video, subscribe to all things What Culture Wrestling. Follow myself on Twitter at gmorgan04. Follow everybody here at What Culture at What Culture WB. But most importantly, above everything else that I say and do on this channel, just have yourself the best day you can because, you know, like, you gotta love yourself, you gotta treat yourself, you just gotta make sure each day is worth living. That got incredibly intense very quickly, but it's been an intense week, an intense show, and I'm an intense Gareth. Bye-bye.